Here is my asset that was created using the layer stack. And we can see here when I rotate this guy here, looking here in, in the bottom corner, we can see the FPS counter. It's super slow. There's two reasons for this. First off here, you can see here in the layer stack, when I go up, we have a bunch of layers. And you can see also see here that we have this uh, green and red here. It, essentially, everything is uncached. I could cache all my stuff here and get faster performance. So we can try that one first here. If I go here into my list stack and say cache up to here. Okay, so now it's baking here under the hood and essentially freezing everything up to that point. So let's take a look here what happens after we've done that. And now we see we can rotate and do all kind of thing. It's super fast, but you can see here it's frozen. I can create layers on top of my cache result, but I can't go in and alter individual layers or anything under this cache location. So that's kind of limiting. Let's uncache this and take a look at some other concepts here. So uncache up to here and there we see now it's super slow again. So one part of this problem is essentially also shader driven. If I go in here to my shader and say I untick this bump here. So bump maps in shading in Mari is it's, it's super slow and now you can see now I will have almost the same feedback as I had without caching but I'm not seeing the bump now so that's another option but wha what is the underlying fundamental problem with layers that uh, nodes is superior and that is uh, something we want to take a look at here now so in the node graph if we want to optimize something instead of caching everything like what can you do here when i do the layers i can uh, essentially cache individual locations or streams so let's see here if i now go back to my shader and enable bump again so instead of, of caching all the streams I could insert a bake point. So a bake point is a way to freeze portions of your node graph up to a certain point, a bit like caching, but instead of, of caching everything, you can cache portions or heavy portions of your stream. You see here now, this is one on the screen when I baked it, and that means it has been frozen everything downstream. And you can see here now, my uh, performance is back to 100% here. Looking here, what happens in the no graph, if I go back here, we have a material. Inside of this material, we have some uh, settings, and all of this is contributing. So if anything, all of these nodes for the bump stream, if I go in here and expand this, we see here we have my material inputs. So all of these materials and streams has a bump stream and they are all evaluated, all nodes at the same time. When you insert a bake point, you can be born strategically and you can also do stuff that you can't do in the layer stack. You can do non-linear things. For example, you can share something to multiple locations and that's really hard to do when you do it in the layer stack. And that's why when I created the layer stack, I kind of broke out some of the major, for example, region masks into channels treated them as their own entities and copied stuff into the layer mask. If this one would be the node graph, I could just uh, take my nodes here, encapsulate them in, within a backdrop. Once I'm happy with all of my results, I then insert bake point, set it to scalar, I bake this, can then use something either i um, expose this as a geo channel so that's possible we're gonna go more into these workflows later on i'm just gonna make a brief overview why the new graph is uh, superior to the lay stack if i now go here and say mask turquoise and now we have a geo channel so let's say that i want to build something i want to have this mask let's say that we have two uh, nodes here color nodes and now let's say that that mask that I created here, I want to access this one. I can do a your channel and say mask turquoise. Essentially now I call for this variable that I defined there in my bake point is going to be used here as a mask. And the beauty of this workflow is, let's say that we want to uh, change something. We insert a merge point, add some extra paint here on top. Let's say that we want to extend the, the this material here underneath. At the moment, it's recalling the bake points state before I did the change. And you can see here also in my bake point, it's red. And that means something has happened upstream. And I now just go in here and rebake. Once this one has rebaked, you see the update came through and this one becomes green. Essentially, you can optimize portions of your project and keep really heavy stuff behind bake points so that's one major advantage using the no graph that you can do uh, this type of optimization but also sharing 
the same information to multiple locations is more easy. In the latest stack you have to copy and paste or do some, there's a, there's a few ways to clone, but it, it's super hard to know what's going on. But with the node graph you can actually see it much, much easier. Either you have the nodules or you use one of these uh, teleporters, for example, teleport uh, broadcast. I would go in here and, and it's a bit like the Geo channel, but this one is more uh, visual. Works very similar to Geo channels, except this one doesn't need to be baked. That's another great addition. Uh, if I want to now see my changes live, I can do that. I can insert this one here as a middleman and have it baked whenever I want to have it frozen. But then if I want to, for example, see this change, I can just disable this one temporarily, do my change. And once I'm happy with the change, I can then re-enable this one. And you can see here, I can then rebake it. So I have the best of both worlds that I can have optimized, but can also have it live uh, if I just insert a bake point before the broadcaster node, for example. And this broadcaster here, you can then pick this one up in multiple locations. Uh, so you can insert teleport receiver in one location. Maybe you need to use the same mask in another location. You can just duplicate this one. And if I update this single location, all of those locations will be updated at the same time. There's a lot of flexibility using the node graph that you can't really easily achieve using a LA stack workflow. We're gonna go through more of this in the next episode.